Thanks, oh, for, yeah, asking. thanks for asking. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to Casey Rep's Thursday Night Mixer. Uh, I'm Stuart Carden, uh, Artistic Director of Casey Rep, and this is our 11th Thursday Night Mixer, and we're really glad that uh, you could join us and, and engage in a little creative conversation, um, mix up a cocktail, and connect with our guests today. Um, and uh, we have a fun connection, which we'll get into a little bit later, but I'm gonna introduce them. And then we're gonna do something that we haven't done before, um, uh, which I'll, I'll share with you in a moment, but let me start with introductions. Um, so this week's guests, uh, I've been excited about this conversation all week, um, includes uh, actor, KCAT board member, Hillary Clemens. Hi. Uh, also, actor, writer, director, filmmaker, Tosin Marhanfala. I did the H. Oh, you did I pretty did good. H. You did pretty good. <laughs> Marhanfala. People Morin say Marhanfala. Usually, they know who you're talking about after you get through Tosin. <laughs> <laughs> um, and actor, director, visiting assistant professor at KU, Santiago Sosa. Hello. So thrilled that the three of you all uh, agreed to join us and um, we'll get into a Chicago connection later on. Um, but uh, today um, I was really inspired and moved by um, the, uh, the honoring of John Lewis and, uh, and incredibly inspired and moved by um, the open letter that he wrote before his passing. And, um, and Hillary and Santiago and Tosin have very generously uh, and, and gamely um, said that they'll join me in a, in a little tribute to him and, and what that's gonna look like. And thank you again, Tosin, Santiago, Hillary, uh, for, for doing this with me. Um, we thought we would, uh, for those that haven't read it yet or heard it spoken out loud, um, we would share uh, his open letter that he wrote um, that I, I believe we all found really inspiring and moving. Um, so we're gonna share that to begin with, and then we're gonna get to, to mixing um, uh, our cocktail from our sponsor, Lifted Spirits, and then jump into the creative conversation after that, and then um, have some time for some questions from all of you all. So Tosin, Santiago, Hillary, shall we? So, so yeah. this is this, incre this incredible letter uh, that John Lewis wrote before his passing and um, and here we go. <clears throat> While my time here has come to an end, I want you to know that in the last days and hours of my life, you inspired me. You filled me with hope about the next chapter of the great American story when you used your power to make a difference in our society. Millions of people motivated simply by human compassion laid down the burdens of division. Around the country and the world, you set aside race, class, age, language, and nationality to demand respect for human dignity. That is why I had to visit Black Lives Matter Plaza in Washington. Though I was admitted to, see, to, to the hospital the following day, I just had to see and feel it for myself that after many years of silent witness, the truth is still marching on. Emmett Till was my George Floyd. He was my Richard Brooks, Sandra Bland, and Breonna Taylor. He was 14 when he was killed, and I was only 15 years old at the time. I will never, ever forget the moment when it became so clear that he could easily have been me. In those days, fear constrained us like an imaginary prison and troubling thoughts of potential brutality committed for no understandable reason were the bars. Though I was surrounded by two loving parents, plenty of brothers, sisters, and cousins, their love could not protect me from the unholy oppression waiting just outside that family circle. Unchecked, unrestrained violence and government sanctioned terror had the power to turn a simple stroll to the store for some Skittles or an in innocent morning jog down a lonesome country road into a nightmare. If we are to survive as one unified nation, 
we must discover what is so red what so readily takes root in our hearts that could rob Mother Emanuel Church in South Carolina of her brightest and best, shooting unwitting concert goers in Las Vegas, and choke to death the hopes and dreams of a gifted violinist like Elijah McClain. Like so many young people today, I was searching for a way out, or some might say a way in. And then I heard the voice of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. on an old radio. He was talking about the philosophy and discipline of nonviolence. He said, we are all complicit when we tolerate injustice. He said, it is not enough to say it'll get better by and by. He said, each of us has a moral obligation to stand up, speak up and speak out. When you see something that is not right, you must say something, you must do something. Democracy is not a state, it is an act. And each generation must do its part to help build what we call the beloved community, a nation and world society at peace with itself. Ordinary people with extraordinary vision can redeem the soul of America by getting in what I call good trouble, necessary trouble. Voting and participating in the democratic process are key. The vote is the most powerful nonviolent change agent you have in a democratic society. You must use it because it is not guaranteed. You can lose it. You must also study and learn the lessons of history because humanity has been involved in this soul-wrenching existential struggle for a very long time. People on every continent have stood in your shoes through decades and centuries before you. The truth does not change. And that is why the answers worked out long ago can help you find solutions to the challenges of our time. Continue to build union between movements stretching across the globe because we must put away our, our willingness to profit from the exploitation of others. Though I may not be here with you, I urge you to answer the highest calling of your heart and stand up for what you truly believe. In my life, I have done all I can to demonstrate that the way of peace, the way of love and nonviolence is the, mo is the more excellent way. Now it is your turn to let freedom ring. When historians pick up their pens to write the story of the 21st century, let them say that it was your generation who laid down the heavy burdens of hate at last, and that peace finally triumphed over violence, aggression, and a war. So I say to you, walk with the wind, brothers and sisters, and let the spirit of peace and the power of everlasting love be your guide. Hot damn. <laughs> Whew. Yeah. John Lewis is uh, <laughs> just such an inspiration. And, you know, sometimes you, you hear his speeches and his, uh, you know, his proselytizing sounds a lot like MLK. So it is unsurprising that his final words are still epically like pastoral. Yeah. And, and um, as empowering it as empowering as it is convicting, you know? Mm. Yeah. And just such a good reminder that we are still in it in every way. Yeah. And I, I love to end, uh, and Jen Spa, who, who helps us with the back end of this, and some other folks today we're, we're talking about, um, his Comic-Con appearance. So there's a graphic novel. I don't know if you, you all have seen this, but this amazing graphic novel called March that, that tells his, his story in graphic novel form. And he mm -hmm. went to Comic-Con where everyone's dressing up as their um, a comic book and Marvel and DC favorites. And he went dressed in his trench coat 
from the famous <laughs> trench coat. Oh yeah. From the, and wow. then he he initiated a parade through Comic Con with the youngest amongst uh, the Comic Con folks, and mm -hmm. and something that really struck me both in the spirit of this, the moment where he knows he's dying and he wants to impart one last um, bit of inspiration, not wisdom, wisdom is wrapped in it, but it's inspirational. Uh, that one of the things wrapped up in it that uh, Obama um, spoke to in his eulogy today is, is really about, he's speaking to young people right now <laughs> and he and both uh john lewis in this letter and to uh and obama in his his speech saying you know i started this journey when i was 20 years old um and you're the one that's going to make this uh this country uh a more just um and a more of a righteous union um it's going to be up to you uh, and, and that was incredibly moving. I, and I also just want to say this really quickly, which is, which is Obama's speech, which I, I recommend if you haven't listened to it, also just puts John Lewis in the frame of founding father of America in such a beautiful and, mm. and necessary way as when we look back a century from now, John Lewis will be recognized as one of one of um, our essential founding fathers. And it was such a powerful, mm -hmm. powerful sentiment. Stuart, <laughs> Stuart, do you, don't you feel too, as a, as a parent, um, an especial sort of feeling of responsibility, right? In this moment of raising little people that are going to be better than we are and the generation that was before us and the generation before that, that, that it's <laughs> just, uh, life and death stakes, right? Uh, to raise this, I mean, for me, I have little white kids and it's my job to teach them how to be people in the world. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I think that's what I really love about the John Lewis letter and, and the Obama eulogy today, which is really framing the necessity of action um, and not just sort of putting a frame around everything that, that mm. we have to take action kind of all the time. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the that reading of the letter was beautiful. First of all, thank you all for lending your voice to amplifying his words. Um, that was really cool. That was very meaningful. So thank you. Mm -hmm. that. And as much of John Lewis's words and as much of uh, the spirit of, of this moment and reflection on his passing, uh, that informs um, the rest of our conversation. Um, uh, we will we will let it speak as it will. Um, mm -hmm. We are going to mix a cocktail. <laughs> we are going to hold on to the to the format, and we do have a cocktail to mix. Um, uh, Tosin is in LA. Yeah, he's going to be mixing his own cocktail. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Which I love, <laughs> and hopefully. Your brother's probably not watching right now, but if he is watching, I hope he's having uh, the uh, this cocktail kit because Amanda Arany, who works with Casey Rep, delivered cocktail kits all over the <laughs> Kansas City and Kansas area. Yeah. Lawrence. Get them. Also stopped by your brothers and dropped off a cocktail. <laughs> kit. Which it's perfect. They just got a house, so it's a housewarming gift. Oh, oh <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, so uh, I, I want to share uh, really quickly that, that this week's cocktail kit, um, as always, is from our official Thursday night mixer sponsor, Lifted Spirits Distillery. They're celebrating the release of their Barrel Reserve uh, gin right here, number two gin. And they're also highlighting folks in the community who are pushing boundaries, taking risks, redefining labels. This is a cool campaign that they're doing highlighting um, entrepreneurs and artists in the community and making videos about them and then also being inspired by them to make a drink each week. And so this week, the drink is Life's a Peach mm. in honor <laughs> of Amy Marcus and the Sweet Tea Pie Company. So she, mm. she, she's the 
the owner of Sweet Tea Pie Company. And the inspiration for the drink is a combination of a gimlet and Amy's habanero peach pies. Ooh. So this, this is the Life's of Peach, and we're going to try to mix this together. Cheers, one I'm another. I'm jealous. I'm jealous. <laughs> I'm super excited about the peach habanero combo. Yeah. 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 All right. So I got my little thing. I, I met by pre-measured because I'm a planner. <laughs> and I have I have none of the appropriate barware, so I just sort of cobbled together a variety of things. I measured this out with a child's like medicine. Um, cup. I'm surprised how many of those little child medicine cups just accrue in your home. Oh yeah. 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 You have a thousand of them. If I were a craftier, like a Pinteresty kind of mom, I would like do some sort of art project. Or something. <laughs> and Tosin, what are you mixing? What are you making? So my girlfriend got me hooked on Soda Stream. So oh, we yeah. have the Soda Streams where we can, you know, carbonate our own drinks, which has been such a great alternative to get me, who is a sugar addict, to slow down on the drink. <laughs> yeah. um, so I've just got some. I still got some sugar though because I have a, 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 a pressed juice that's a roots juice with apple, lemon, ginger, and beet. And I'm oh, gonna yeah. put that with my uh, soda stream and get a nice little carbonated juice. Beautiful. I'm, I'm a soda stream addict too. Um, so likes a peach, one and three fourths ounce of the batch. So this is the peach and the habanero simple syrup. And, and it says one and three fourths ounce. Of this ahead of me. Very Shakespearean. It's like <laughs> I let right? This little apothecary <laughs> vial. Yeah. I actually have my little uh Shakespeare Romeo and Juliet oh, portfolio that. glass that my good friend Morgan gave me. Wow. Wow. Um two ounces of the barrel gin. And then they, they also provided us with a lime. I know. I, I oh, that's nice. I didn't see in the recipe what to do with it. What I to do with it, but I'm assuming you just squeeze it and a squeeze and a you know maybe run it on the garnish. Yeah, squeeze and a garnish. Mm -hmm. Are the people watching at home so jealous, man? <laughs> well, I, smells good. Many people have been buying this cocktail kit from Lifted Spirits and then like mixing along at home. Oh, oh nice. jealous. Hopefully Very they're smart. <laughs> That's oh, cool. So we got ourselves a cooking show. They can cook along with us. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't, but don't pay any attention to anything I'm doing. I'm probably doing it. Uh, are you all shaking? <laughs> I'm skipping the shake. I'm, I'm just stirring. I, I shook. Okay. I shook it. All right, I'm almost there. Give me one second. I'm there for you teetotalers <laughs> wait, at home. Wait. <laughs> I'm ready. And uh, here we go. All right. Smells amazing. Um, cheers, friends. Thank you so Thank much you. for making time. It's so good to see you. Cheers. Yeah. Yeah. Cheers. Whoa. Whoa, that's mm. real good. Wow. <laughs> Ooh, that's tasty. That's surprising and good. I don't awesome. normally like gin. I actually, I don't think I've had gin in like 10 years and that's really good. Well, this yeah, one that's... is uh, oak barrel aged. And so it's got like a little um, smoky bourbon that's yeah. why I like quality it. to it. Oh, and mm. I got drink Santiago, I, I think I remember this. You drink bourbon. Oh yes, I love yeah. bourbon. So that's bourbon and tequila. Like yeah, gosh. I, when I was like, oh, Jen, I was like, all right, I'll pretend I like it. And I was like, this is really good. I actually really like it. <laughs> That's great. That's great. The habanero no. is nice, too. Tosin, I'm sorry. Mm. Hopefully no, it's fine. Hopefully it's your fine. brother's I'm, enjoying it. I'm not offended at all. <laughs> I got so much of this mix left. <laughs> oh, <laughs> nice. Now we have, like, like a, a full bottle of gin. Just Right, I can throw a little party. With uh, so amazing. If people <laughs> want to uh, join us next week, you can pick up a cocktail kit. Uh, at Lifted Spirits, um, at their site, liftedspiritskc.square.site. And you can you can pick them, or you can pick them up in person at their um, their distillery at 1734 Cherry Street. So thanks to Lifted Spirits for, mm. for supporting this. Mm. It's tasty. Yeah. Thank you, Lifted Spirits. That's a dangerously good cocktail. Yeah, it's real summery. <laughs> mm -hmm. So refreshing. It's got a little bite.
Love it. Want to try the Mine has some bite to it too. There's <laughs> ginger in here. I can join you on the bite tip. I like some good ginger, man. I love juice, man. Juice bars all day long. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I'm going to start off with this because we were kind of working this out before we 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 um, started this conversation. But we all have spent some time in Chicago. We've all had a Chicago stint. And now mm -hmm. we have a Kansas City connection. Um, some of us new, some of us older. Uh, and um, so let's get this straight. What were the what were the years uh, in what were the years in Chicago? The years in Chicago to start off with. I think. Uh, am I the first one? I don't know. Okay, so I was in Chicago from, I left after, I, I left Kansas City to Chicago in 2013. So I was there 2013 to 2017 when I moved to LA. Those are my years. Mm -hmm. And I did a play with Stuart, where Stuart directed me at Northlight Theater in 20, I want to say 16. I will go with you on that. <laughs> I think that's right. Yes. Yeah, I went. Uh, so I, w I looked for grad schools in the Chicago, close to Chicago, and landed in Madison, Wisconsin. So from 2009 to 2012, I was in grad school, but spending a lot of time in Chicago, getting to know people, um, getting an agent out there. And then right after or my last semester in grad school, I, I think I met Stuart about 10 years ago. A, a yeah. woman I was dating was an intern out there, and I, I met him 10 years ago. Uh, around the same time I met Hillary when we were at American Players Theater. And then uh, we were doing Hamlet and I got uh, offered an understudy for like 11 roles um, that we did that show. It felt like it went on for several months, it's a lot like of roles. Three or four months. Yeah, so I went on multiple times because people were, you know, they had to go and things were happening. So it was cool. Our rehearsals were like me being Rosencrantz and Guildenstern and they're just jumping back and forth with <laughs> David Castellanos and yeah so that was there from 12 to 14 and then that then I moved to Nashville and then I just got to Kansas City or Kansas uh last fall and then for you Hillary the Chicago connection uh well for me I I grew up here in Kansas City and then I went to college in Chicago so I was there and Here's how old I am, everyone. Uh, from 2000 until uh, right at the end of 2014, beginning of 2015 is when I think I left Chicago for good. And then I traveled around for a while and then uh, landed here in early 2016. Yeah, and, and uh, so I, I know each one of you from Chicago. That's where I met each one of you. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. I was there the longest tenure. Uh, I, I, from grad school, right out of grad school, I moved to Chicago in 2001 um, and then uh, was there until last September. Uh, I, I had a short stint in Pittsburgh um, for a couple of years, uh, but uh, I would say I think I have the longest tenure. But Bertosa, you grew up here I, in, yes, in I, Kansas. I did grow up in Kansas. Um, and then- and Your parents um, immigrated from Nigeria. Yes. Uh, when, when, when they were, when they when were they, how old and how did they end up in Kansas? They immigrated uh, in their late 20s. Yeah. And they first went to um, uh, Pennsylvania. I was born in Pennsylvania. My dad went to Penn State. And then as a, as a doctor, you know, sometimes the, the residencies place you in strange places. And he was placed in Greensburg, Kansas. So we actually started, uh, we spent a bit of our childhood for three years in Greensburg and then kind of matriculated up to Can Overland Park. Okay. Um, when I was in like fifth grade or something. So my family still lives there. They love the rep. Um, it was the happiest thing in the world that, that in my transition to LA, I briefly stopped back in Kansas to do A Raisin in the a Sun. In the sun. They couldn't have been happier to have their son back for a couple. <laughs> and, um, yes. and, in that, and in that incredible, incredible play. Uh, and in yeah, that incredible, and, and, yes. incredible role, I really wish I was here to have seen you in it. I wish you could have too. It was it was <laughs> it was a major one for me for so many reasons. Initially, I thought I, that I was going to be asked to play the Nigerian part, which is a substantial Nigerian presence in all of I'm American theater history. Like it's like one of the substantial substantial ones. 
in terms of classics. But then they asked me to play Walter Lee, the, the, the leading man. And that was an honor. And it was also the last time I did theater. So it was a nice kind of crown on my mm. in theater before more fully focusing on film. So, yeah, and really quickly, and it's like there's so much to talk about and I'm already <laughs> mad at how time works. Uh, but really quickly, I'm gonna name a couple things just for, for reference. Um, so you mentioned you're in LA now. Uh, mm -hmm. You have, and I, I love saying that. I've been so excited to say the following words. You can see Tosin in <laughs> the erotic thriller <laughs> on BET right now. That's right. That's right. Go watch it. Tosin in the erotic thriller. That's what I was excited about saying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah. Tosin's also a filmmaker. Um, uh, uh, making the, the films Endowed, a parable about fatherhood and on site, a social, social justice police thriller. Um, and then a regular on um, a lot of shows uh, um, that I'm not gonna name now for the yeah. sake of time, <laughs> but a regular Same. on a lot of shows, uh, but yeah. got your start in Kansas City. Yeah. Coterie and Unicorn. That's right, that's right. Casey remains home. That's amazing. Um, and uh, Hillary, um, I'm going to transition to you just for a second, just to give a couple highlights, Casey Rep connection. Um, so Hillary, uh, season before, not this current season that we just uh -huh. uh, uh, finished, but the season before you were in the Monday Night Playwright series, yes. um, the Andrew Rosendorf play Mermaid, who yes. I admire him so much. He's such so a good. Good playwright. So um, good. You were in that reading. You've been here four years. Yeah. And um, the last time that you were on the KC Rep main stage mm -hmm. with Spencer, please share what it was and who you were playing and how old you were. Yeah, uh, I would say that the last, uh, yeah, the last time I was on the Spencer stage, I was 13 uh, and playing Want in A Christmas Carol. It was wow. my third of, of three seasons that I did of A Christmas Carol. And did you uh, come out from underneath the- Oh, I very <laughs> much came out from underneath. The... <laughs> underneath the once, down. once he stepped on my little, you know, out schmata that I was wearing. And so uh, <laughs> it's like filling with fog under the robe. And I'm like, just stuck there. Stuck. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> like knowing that I'm supposed to start doing the claws, you know, and I uh, and I was just thinking, what, what, how, how did I get here? And um, and then just sort of by the grace of the theater gods, he shifted his weight slightly, and I was like, yeah, I'm going. So one, <laughs> with like extra urgency. That, that. <laughs> and um, you were going to be before all of the pandemic world crashed in on us. You were also going to be in um, a reading of uh, the vast in between. And yeah. so was Santiago. Happy, yeah. Uh, the vast in between Laura Eason's play that was a part of the Origin KC new play festival reading series. Um, and both of you all were slated. We were very close. We yeah. read through it. We did. Yeah, you all read through it. We got fact. one read through. And then as the whole Origin KC festival shut down closing on opening night and also the readings which were slated all shut down um uh, i'm really uh, i really wish we could have uh, experienced you all in that in that reading and i hope someday in the future we we will have that chance again um mm -hmm. the other thing that i'm just going to share from your bio that i just loved hillary is yeah. that uh hillary also highlighted that she's currently starring in an open-ended run playing Captain Barnacles and the parents are going to get this <laughs> playing uh -huh. Captain Barnacles in the open-ended run of please let's pretend to be the characters from the Octonauts mama <laughs> <laughs> as well as multiple children's work. the Octonauts were non-stop in my twins life and the <laughs> yeah. pretend to be the Octonauts yeah the ongoing role that I played in my my twin's life between the ages of like three to six. So uh -huh. <laughs> I feel your joy and pain. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Up and out to the launch bay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm very good at Captain Barnum. The, the good thing is the Octonauts, probably they, it does um, uh, ask you to 
to uh, um, lean on your dialect skills. It does. There's sort of a, there's a Cockney situation. Right. There's uh, someone who I believe is Spanish. I think Peso the Penguin is Spanish. Yeah. Um, Pedro. And yeah, there's some of a kind of a Northern Yorkshire thing going on sometimes. It's, and also I have learned quite a bit about marine biology. <laughs> I'm not kidding. It is like legit, very informative. I can tell by the blank looks it toasted and touching the face. <laughs> You've never heard of it. Not a word. Oh, oh. Like, check it out. It is. I'm fascinated now. I'm curious. Uh, and I'm going I'm to do a, a, a really quick uh, introduction. I knew that Santiago, you're um, so you're at KU. You're mm -hmm. you're a visiting um, assistant professor. Is that right? Correct. At KU. Mm -hmm. Focus on voice and Shakespeare, and I, and I always knew that that you were a, a language actor and a Shakespearean um, uh, actor, but after looking at your bio, I didn't really recognize um, how much that that has been a part of your career. Like Shakespeare festivals all mm -hmm. over the country, um, a huge number of, of roles, and that that's that's been the kind of bread and butter of your career as an actor is um, is is Shakespeare. Uh, and now you're teaching voice and Shakespeare um, at KU. Yeah, that was, uh, it really actually started probably about 10 years ago when I fr first met Hillary and, and her husband, Matt, who actually kind of took me under his wing and he's like, hey man, I, I feel like this is something you could be doing. And he kind of really pushed me in that direction. But the, uh, the last four years um, has been really just directing. So I, I've directed um, 10 Shakespeare shows in the last four years and I've got slated to direct another three or four in the next slated in the next year or two I was supposed to do one this past summer um, so yeah uh, that that summer at APT was a real kind of game changer for me because before then I was working in multimedia theater and was running my own company for about six years and then I got to APT and I was like oh this is maybe more of what I really want to be doing um, so yeah that's been really the last 10 years and for those that, that don't know APT, it's American Players Theater. It's in Wisconsin. And it's this really remarkable theater company that is an out, they have an outdoor and an indoor space, but their outdoor space and the way you get to it is just like as much a part of the theatrical experience as, mm. as anything. You, you park and then you walk up through the woods and there's picnic spots along the way. Um, uh, and it's a real um, sense of community and you spend the whole evening there uh, and it sits in this, you crest a, a hill and, you, and it, the theater uh, is a bowl below you. Um, and it's just a magical space and they're a really remarkable theater company. Um, and both of you all work there. Uh, how long were you there, Hillary? I just did one season. One season. Uh, yeah, yeah I, just I did, same. Um, Santi and I did As You Like It uh, together. And um, and that's actually where I met my husband, although we, I mean, we didn't start uh, dating until a couple years after that, but we met playing uh, Rosalind in Orlando and in, in As You Like It at APT. And then mm. Santi, were you and I, were you and Major Barbara too? Yeah, we were in all That's right. three together. Oh no, and, and Matt was and I were in all three together. I played yeah, his I little brother in As You Like It. <laughs> That's mm. right. yeah, yeah. And, and just flashing back just for one second, and then we're going to dig into the creative conversation part. Um, but Hillary uh, is a, a company member, board member at KCAT, um, yes. and has done uh, many roles uh, in a short amount of time uh, mm -hmm. at KCAT. Several roles. Several roles. I've done two. Uh, Nora, Nora <laughs> in a doll's house, uh, and right. what is what is the other? Uh, Sally in a lie of the mind. Right, um, and then also at at Heart of America Shakespeare Festival, Shakespeare in Love, uh, and um, Hamlet uh, yeah, in Hamlet. Yeah. Right. Doll's house was the first show I saw when I moved here last year. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was a it was the first thing I saw, and I was like, "That's Hillary." <laughs> I know, and you sat in the front row. <laughs> I'm so anticipating that the like moment where for me I've been here now nine ten months almost ten months um I'm so anticipating the moment where like it flips over to I know the place I know the those productions I I, I can reflect with people 
<laughs> and, mm -hmm. uh, and it really being a place where I can wrap my brain and arms around this community. I, I feel still in that funny position of being new and a bit of an outsider. Um, and and uh, I'm looking forward to that day where, where it switches to really having a sense of this community. Um, uh, uh, that won't be too long from now. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I would love to, to- I would also like to interrupt- oh, please, Tosa. Take, take partial credit for the fact that you're at the rep now because we did have a conversation before you started interviewing there where I spoke very highly of you and them. And I just thought it was a match made in heaven. So I'm so glad you came. Tosin to was a huge part of both the, yes, this is, this is a good fit. And this is where I, I feel like I really should be. And so, and, and so were a handful of other artists that have Chicago connections. Like yeah. the Casey Chicago um, highway is yeah. all traveled, uh, and yeah. yeah, and I respected so much um, your opinion from our work together on the on the one show that we did together, but also your work in the city and also our our community of of friends and colleagues that were like, hey, that have a history with Casey Rep. They were like. This is this is a this is a really good match, um, mm -hmm. and you didn't have to sell me on it. <laughs> like I was, <laughs> but you did. You gave me you gave me a a, a frame of reference that mm. that really helped me make to really lean into this this opportunity. So Tosin, yeah. thank you for that, friend. I'll take a drink for myself. <laughs> <laughs> no, and lots of friends paved ways. Lots of people. Lots of friends pinged yeah. folks at Casey Rep in the community and said, um, Pay "Attention to this guy." Said 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 uh, generous things. So mm -hmm. thank you for that, my friend. Of course. Um, uh, so I would love to. to we're already at six thirty-seven. <laughs> we typically transition to questions from Facebook uh, at twenty minutes. I'm going to get in one question before we do that, which is, um, you know. Particularly with this group, I think it's it's yeah. Get that get that second one going. <laughs> Particularly with this group, I'm really interested in um, some of the conversations I've had with with folks in this series. They um, are are really exclusively um, theater artists. Exclusively, exclusively. All three of you all are theater artists that also teach, are, are um, board members at KCAT, are filmmakers and engaged in the film industry and TV. Tosin are um, visiting professors. Uh, so, so I'm interested in this question, which is how are you all in the, in the context of, of, of the pandemic, how are you engaging creatively right now? And has it, has it changed your focus? Has it changed how you're engaging creatively? For some theater artists, it's been a dead stop, right? That, that the work, because there isn't a live theater performance option right now, it's been a dead stop. And so they're engaging in other ways creatively. All three of you have different avenues that were already alive. And so I'm interested in, in how, what that means for you in terms of the theater work being paused by the pandemic. How are you engaging creatively right now? Uh, well, for me personally, I, you know, it's an interesting rhythm as uh, already in, as in the film sphere, you know, I'm coming from theater where I'm busy all the time. Rehearsals are endless and you're performing every day, six days out of the, out of the week. To and a twice on Saturday and Sunday. Yes. And twice on weekends, coming to a space where I have a lot more free time because I'm unemployed a lot more of the time, auditioning, looking for work much more constantly means that the transition into the pandemic lane was not as drastic for me because I was already unemployed. <laughs> I, was, I was already spending most of my time looking for work. So, uh, you know, that that. So that part wasn't as jarring. However, where does the creative energy go? 
is the thing. Um, and, and for me, it really was really helpful that I was already kind of multidisciplinary because then I could just put those efforts, those that those energies into those other efforts, things that I'd been sitting on. Specifically, I had a, a, a movie that I've been wanting to write for a while. It's been percolating in my head and the screenplay has been kind of like the plot points and all of this, you know, nuances were coming together. And then finally I had a time, an uninterrupted time without distraction where it was like, put up or shut up. If you really want to do this thing, write it now. So I spent a good couple months, maybe four of these months, really focusing on writing. And when I wasn't writing the screenplay, the poet side of me decided it would, you know, take 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 over and I just wrote a little bit of poetry here and there. So really the the writing side and the 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 creating uh, creating of things that have my own artistic statements rather than jumping onto other people's artistic statements has really been uh, nurturing for me personally. <clears throat> um, I have two follow-up questions. Yes. One is, is there a snippet of poetry that is committed to memory that you can share with us? Uh, I will think about that. Okay, <laughs> and I'll ask the second question. Okay. <laughs> Second question, which is um, uh, the activist side of you has also, from my perspective, uh, been a part of this creative work. You wrote this really phenomenal um, article, essay. Yeah. Article and essay that was in Vulture. Is that it was I it was published in medium 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 sorry yes in yeah. medium that I thought was extraordinary uh, that was reflecting on the um, film and TV industry mm -hmm. in catalyzed in some ways by the social justice movement um, yeah that was amazing Thank and you. such a great piece of of writing and uh, and clearly, creatively, that has been a part of your... Yeah. It's interesting, because I, I was thinking of that as more academic, but it really was kind of a creative output. Um, I think I was also experiencing writer's block on the screenplay I was writing. But at that time, with the George Floyd's murder and with the, the Black Lives Matter movement really taking national hold of our attention, it gave us an opportunity to uh, reflect on all of the areas in which this systemic uh, oppressions have ripples. Yeah. And, you know, it, it's very easy to remove ourselves as artists and think that, well, here's a problem that we can't solve because we're not law enforcement, we're not legislators, we're, we feel things and we talk about it, you know? And while that is true, uh, the, the great part about the movement that's happening now is people are actually asking more questions about their complicity and about how those systems are interwoven. So they're seeing the bigger picture. And for us, like in entertainment, we have an opportunity to really um, see what are the things we, uh, take as assumed and take for granted and take as default. Yeah. If, if television, more than 50% of television is uh, uh, law enforcement shows, police shows, military shows, and often they deify them, they make them into heroes. No matter what they do or go through, how many times they bend or break the laws. And when that psychology is reinforced and reinforced and reinforced, how can it not uh, inform and in fact indoctrinate the way we perceive um, the supposed always nobility of our of our of our law enforcement and of our government officials. So that's just like one example out of many. Besides casting um, processes, besides um, who is behind the table making decisions um, in terms of producers on products yeah. projects, um, and that goes for theater and film. When are they tokenizing the people of color that they are employing? When are they tokenizing the stories of color that they are employing? 
and trying finding the way to see how we're all connected, even tacitly and even unknowingly, and trying to use what little influence we have, even though we're just the feelers, is is I think important. So so that's where um, the article the article is called uh, "Undoing Systems of Oppression in Hollywood." Is that what I called it? Either, uh, either that. Yeah. Or in entertainment, undoing systems of oppression is the first part, and then you can just put in toast. And I will ask that uh, Jen Spa, who's always great about this, that she that she she's probably already done this link link to this on on Facebook because it's it's a great piece of writing. Uh, thanks Thank for you. Sharing, I really appreciate that. that uh, she already wrote to me. Already done. She already sent to me. <laughs> she's, she's on top of it. Thank you. Um, so. Uh, uh, Santiago, for, for you, how are you engaging creatively? And I'm gonna mm -hmm. tag team this with, I would love to hear that, and tag team this with a question that came in because I'm collapsing these two things because we're time is ticking. Uh, a mm -hmm. question from, I think Peggy Friesen. Hi, Peggy, thank you always for your really thoughtful and meaningful questions that you, that you share on the series. Um, she asks, I'd love to hear from Santiago about the conversations he, he's currently having with his theater students about the industry. What questions are they asking him in this moment? So no small That's task. Can, can, you both, <laughs> can you both speak to how you're engaging creatively right now? Yeah. And, then, and then also if, if you will uh, uh, share a response to Peggy's question about how yeah. you're having conversations with theater students about the industry. I can't imagine, you know, I can't <laughs> imagine. It's, so there, there's actually, um, so 2019 was a crazy year for me. Um, at the beginning, I had directed four Shakespeare shows back to back because things got rescheduled while teaching at four different universities and text coaching two shows and fight directing another. So the spring was crazy into the summer. <laughs> and then I moved to KU and had to get all adjusted. So when the pandemic hit, I was like, <sighs> like there was this part of me that I was like, like there was a little <laughs> bit of breath that could be taken, but also I'm used to going 100% all the time. So it gave me a little bit of anxiety to have a little extra time off. Um, but in that time, like I still was working, working hard until May hit. And like once school was over, I was like, okay, I was supposed to direct Love's Labor's Loss at the Island Shakespeare Festival off the coast of Washington and Woody Island. Um, so I'm still working on that, it postponed. Uh, what I have picked up and what I've been doing um, is three things. One, uh, in 1997, I wrote a play when I was in junior college at Wharton, Texas, and I found the word processor version of it that uh, I actually won a Horton Foote Award for playwriting, and Horton Foote gave me an award and gave me all this money. What? Yeah, so I was able to produce the show at the university because it was at Wharton County where he's from in Wharton, Texas, and so I produced my first show and I, I migrated from being an art major because I wanted to be a comic book artist and graphic designer into theater because of this play that I wrote just on the women. I found that play when I moved and it's just terrible. I don't know why anybody <laughs> gave me money to produce it. Um, I was, so I was actually, waiting for the, and now it is a <laughs> ready I, I, to change the Casey rep. <laughs> I am rewriting, I have rewritten it and updated it. Um, uh, so I spent about two months just reading it and rewriting it. And I was like, okay, this is a 19 year old Santi. Now we're at 41 year old Santi. So what can I write? And it's still set in the nineties. So I was been doing that one, uh, two, I am producing this thing with, uh, university of Kansas and the Island Shakespeare festival. It, 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 this may be a pretentious name right now, but all I, I've got right now is it's called musings of fire and it is going to be a live, socially distant, virtual theater production that we'll be using with actors out in Washington and uh, other Island Shakespeare and just a few KU students where we're trying to figure out how we can like keep them distant, keep them isolated in their own stage, but we're gonna be using, I'm reading called uh, Teaching Social Justice Through uh, Using Shakespeare or so something like that teaching social justice through Shakespeare. So I've been reading these essays about how we can educate students using the words of Shakespeare. And so much of it is so relevant right now that I'm building this show. Um, it's still this device piece that's gonna be this virtual live um, multimedia thing, which is what I did in the early 2000s. Right, so I'm now, building that. right now we're all hyphens and slashes. Like right now it's like, 
it's digital, it's live, it's distanced, but it's intimate. <laughs> it's like, yes. So it's got, you know, I'm, I'm going to get connected with Tosin and I want to get some of your thoughts and, and Hillary's <laughs> thoughts on some of the things that we can use in this. Yeah. Uh, but so I'm, I'm building that right now while I'm also working on a production of As You Like It at this theater company that in Nashville uh, um, called The Theater Bug. And they've been doing some really incredible work. Uh, there's a series called Quarantined right now, Teen, T-E-N. And it's a teenage company uh, and kids that I started developing Shakespeare shows and adapting shows for teenagers and elementary and it kind of took off so we're going to be doing a show next year either in the spring or next summer uh, which is uh, going to be an as you like it and we're going to have like um, Nashville some of them are platinum selling artists maybe help us with writing some of the music and I'm going to be turning it into I, I turned as you uh, much to do about nothing last year into a musical I'll be turning this one into more of a Nashville base because it's Nashville these kids are terribly talented but we'll be having teenagers mm -hmm. and some of um, these musical artists maybe help us developing music. So I'm d adapting that right now. Well, first of all, um, I would say, Santiago, you have not slowed down. <laughs> at all. I, and, so that, second, that's true. and second, I just want to reference this really quickly, which is um, right now we have in process our summer youth theater ensemble. Mm -hmm. um, which Mindy McCrary, our director of education, has has um, I'm tired of pivot has transformed the um, has transformed the, the live theater process of this, but moved and moved it to, di to a digital platform. But now more than ever, the both the necessity for voices of the young, we all need to hear them, and also an outlet for their expression is so needed right now yeah. mm -hmm. as people are isolated and full of anxiety and mm -hmm. these young people have things to say and need oh, yeah. an outlet to be heard. And so I applaud you for, for doing that work. It's, um, with it's incredible. And also just wanna give a shout out to our education program who they're wrapping up their we their their month long process. They're going to be editing this next week, and then we're going to share out the um, the film slash digital experience of uh, their writing process with a terrific team of of um, teaching artists Andy Perkins, Yutun Day, Felix Ugu, uh, oh, wow. and uh, Khalif uh, Gillette, who have been working with them in partnership with Mindy to create this piece. So we need to hear their voices. They're incredible. And they need an opportunity and to express themselves right now. So shout out to you for that Thank work. you. I would say truly that I'm, and I've said this, the artistic director, Corey Lamel, who's a dear friend, that I'm a better theater maker because of the last four years that I've been working with this company. Um, they, mm -hmm. they produced a show, she wrote a show about trans youth and they were doing it in the um, recreation gym area of a church. And that yeah. church was like, gotta go. And they got kicked out after that. And so there was a big number, Good Morning America came and this country singer that's a friend of the company, Dirk Bentley came in and he would kind of put them like, hey, let's help them find a new space. Uh, so I encourage people to check out the theater, but they're doing incredible work. And so that's something that I've been doing uh, this summer, but it's been giving me, it's given me the opportunity to work on these things without being like, anxious or like yeah. shoehorning it into time. Like I'm able to let this work breathe and kind of enjoy it instead of be under the gun. And to answer the question, I'll get to that question. Um, well, sorry, I'm, I am gonna call host prerogative with the timeline and say that Peggy oh, Friesen, I'm gonna set you all up on a socially distanced date and you can yes. respond to, to her very thoughtful <laughs> question, Peggy. I so appreciate you. Uh, you're recognizing what time it is. I want to make sure I hear hear from Hillary. Mm -hmm. um, Santiago, I set you up for that. I'm sorry. I asked you two questions at once. No, it's okay. great. <laughs> this is on me, and I'm calling host prerogative so that we can check in with Hillary. Uh, uh, and I would love to hear raising two, two, right? Humans, raising two humans. Uh, and being a theater artist um, and being a board member uh, and company member at KCAT. 
how my friend creatively are you are you engaging in this model? Well, um, I have zero free time uh, at <laughs> all, just none. Um, my uh, my son is he just turned four, and uh, our daughter will be two in September. So they are tiny chaos agents um, that need <laughs> so much uh, attention, um, which is great. They're delightful uh, most of the time, but. Um, but they're not at an age where, you know, luckily they're not at an age where I'm having to do like virtual school with them. Um, Henry had been in um, preschool and now isn't of course, but, um, but we're not having to do like Zoom classes, which is good for us. But he also like, we can't just send them off into their rooms with a book or to go run around outside by themselves. So um, it's a lot. And, uh, and my husband is the director of performance studies at Avila University. So he has been spending his whole summer off uh, just completely reimagining um, various versions of how his semester is going to go. And, uh, and we're both board members at KCAT. So we have sort of ongoing responsibilities with that where we're meeting, I mean, the artistic committee of KCAT is meeting virtually weekly um, to go through everything and yeah. figure out how to be a theater right now um, in every way. Uh, we're, we're taking some very serious uh, uh, steps toward uh, equity in our company and diversity and inclusion. And so we're meeting and, and taking actions on that um, pretty much constantly, uh, as well as coming up with various versions of what uh, our, our theater is going to be and what our programming can be um, until we can have people gathering safely again and then what having people gathering safely again eventually will be too. So it's a lot to do. And I, I also... Uh, I, I, since um, January 2017, have been I'm doing- I'm glad you bring this up. I was gonna thing. ask you about it, so go. Yeah, um, I did a dumb thing, which is that um, this Monday after the inauguration of our current president, I, I went on Facebook and I, I had just seen that so much had already happened in like 70, 72 hours. And, um, and I, I just went on Facebook and was like, here's a list of stuff that's already happened. Have a great week. Um, and then I did it again the next day. And then I did it again the next day. And um, so that that was like three and a half years ago. And uh, oh my God. So um, until I had my second baby, uh, I, it was every weekday that I posted what has become, and now it's weekly um, because two babies. Um, but uh, mm -hmm. it's a list basically of nothing but just straight up facts with none of my opinion or editorializ or editorialization, that's a word, um, or spin or propaganda or anything. It's just, here's a thing that happened and it's all primary source, meaning this is a video of the person saying this, or here is the data from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. And here is the actual Supreme Court decision that you can read through. And I link to those sources and I, I just, I, I have found that the facts are startling and storytelling enough on their own without much else. And I thought that there was such a fire hose of information all of the time right now. And so much of it uh, from people with a, a very strong agenda um, that I thought it would be good to have there be uh, something on social media because that's where a lot of actual fake news gets spread uh, for there to be a, a resource for people that are like, I just want to know what's going on and I want to know for real what's going and, on. And if you are lucky enough to be friends with Hillary Clemens, you've seen this. <laughs> it's great. If you have not hidden me religiously, long ago. <laughs> religiously. religiously. And, and I read it almost every week, Hillary. And I don't know if you know this, but there's, a, there's so many people out there that read it every single week. And I've never mentioned it to you, but I read it every single week that it, that almost every single week that it, that it comes out. Thank you, um, wow. And I consume a lot of media. I consume a lot of news, but I appreciate my, the way that you frame it and that I can just go boom, 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 mm -hmm. and get updated. So thank you for that. Yeah. What you're doing, it takes a, a ton of labor <laughs> and thoughtfulness mm -hmm. and it's appreciated. Um, Jen mm -hmm. Spa asked, uh, how can you find this? I think you have to be friends with Hillary. So uh, no, you can, um, you can just hit, you don't have to be Facebook friends with me. Yeah. Uh, you can hit the, the follow button. Uh, all of these posts are public. So okay. if you hit the follow button, you can see them. I also have you on Facebook, Hillary Clemens. Mm -hmm. And then hit uh, Hillary Clemens Harbor. That's my legal Harbor, name. Sorry. 
Um, and uh, and you can just hit the follow button and I, I, I do it uh, about once a week. We are, we got to one question. We ignored most Facebook questions. <laughs> I have been a bad host this week no. because I so wish there were some great questions that came in. We, we're, we've been pretty uh, strict and we will be strict tonight, Jen Spa. Um, pretty strict about sticking to the seven uh, o'clock deadline. I'm gonna ask if you've got it in you super quick, like one, two, three, if you've got eat, drink and experience and we'll go a couple as fast as we can do it over, uh, eat, drink and experience on the other side of this socially distanced pandemic moment. Um, I'm going to start with you, Hillary. Eat, All drink, right. experience. Uh, I want to take my kids to the Nelson uh, Art Museum because it's one of my favorite places in the entire world and it's my my son's absolute favorite place. Uh, and then um, I'd like to go, I'm, gonna, I'm a Northlander, so I'm going to shout out La Costa, which is my favorite Mexican restaurant on the historic Liberty Square. And then I also want rehearsal room, green room, coffee. <laughs> Love it. Santiago, Santi. Uh, you know, I, I, I saw you put about the, the American Jazz Museum. So that's like top of my list. I saw, I saw you took your kids there and I was like, I'm going, I'm going. In terms of eat and drink, I just don't know. You have to tell me where to go. I, obviously a jazz place, some we'll barbecue, go back. you have to tell me. We'll go back to, um, we'll go back to the, uh, the ramen place. That place is great. Yeah. You and, remember and the name of it? I, I don't, but Columbus, I remember it was awesome. Like three seat, Teeny, tiny place. place. I can't, I can't like, remember. There's like three was like, tables in the whole place. All right. <laughs> yeah, it was great. We'll remember what that is and we'll go there. Tosin, eat, drink experience. This is pretty easy and obvious for me. I, it would have to be Oklahoma Joe's. I just, I need it. I need it. And if it's not Oklahoma Joe's, if I venture off of barbecue, we'll do Town Topic because I just love getting those burgers in that diner. They, and the French toast, they know what they're doing over there. Um, <laughs> uh, drink, I would travel back in time, two years, possibly three, and go get a drink, if I had my druthers, from Snow & Co., which was a place, it was in Westport, then it moved to Crossroads, and I don't know, I don't know if it's still around anymore, but I loved their mixed ice, uh, snow cone drinks so that's a big ask because i we needed time travel for that need tra time travel yeah and and then um it's, it's gonna sound obvious too but experience i one of my favorite things is when i come home is seeing my friends in shows yeah and i would love 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 to come home and see my friends in a show in kansas city so i that's what i want to experience on the other side of this well we'd love to see you here my friend yeah I so appreciate you, Hillary and Santiago and Tosin. Um, I've been looking forward to this and, and it's deeply meaningful, even in this medium, to be able to connect and have a conversation and um, reminisce and also dream about the future. So thank you so much. And mm -hmm. thanks for being willing to share that really beautiful letter from, from John Lewis. I really appreciate hearing your voices amplify his words and um this has been really fun and really meaningful so thank you thank, thank you, you. Great. all right jen thanks mm -hmm. jen's gonna sign us off and we'll say hi to each other in a second okay, okay.